Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a Levine's test using only Excel functions. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to run a Levine's test across these three groups without using the analysis tool pack and without using SPSS, although I will compare the output to SPSS output near the end of the video. So in an earlier video, I demonstrated how to conduct an ANOVA using only Excel functions. And this is the worksheet that I used in that video. And I'm going to briefly review what I've done here. If you want to see the uh, detailed explanation of how I designed this, I'd recommend watching the video on ANOVA step by step. So we have here three levels of the same dependent variable, we'll call this a dependent variable functioning. All these scores here are on that dependent variable. And we have three levels, uh, substance use, focus therapy, depression focus therapy, and trauma focus therapy. And we want to run an ANOVA to see if there is a statistically significant difference between these three sets of scores. And you can see I've displayed all the calculations up top here. So for the first column, you have the score minus the mean. Right, so you can see the score here, 43, minus the mean of 43. That's where we get the zero. And as we move down, you notice that the row moves down to the next score, but the mean is still locked uh, for the as the mean for all the values here in substance use. I've done the same thing for depression, the same thing for trauma, and then I've taken this expression and squared it to arrive at this expression, add them all together to get the sum of squares, I have the sum of squares for all three groups, and then adding all three of these together gives us the sum of squares within. To, to calculate sum of squares total, I just took all the scores and put them into one column, column B, ran the same calculation, right, the score minus the mean of all the scores, which is displayed down here, which is 49, squared that in the next column over, and then took the sum of squares, so the sum of all these values here, and that equals the sum of squares total. So that's 5534, five, and up here we have 5534, five, five, and then sum of squares between is equal to the difference between these two. So this is sum of squares total minus sum of squares within. And then we have all the sum of squares that we need. And then we take the sum of squares between divided by the degrees of freedom, the numerator degrees of freedom, which would be the number of levels or groups, minus one. So that's three minus one. So sum of squares between divided by two. And then for the sum of squares within, we're going to use the degrees of freedom from the denominator, and that's going to be the total number of observations, in this case 45, minus the total number of groups, in this case 3, so that's 42. And that's where we get the 101.0476 value. And then to calculate the F value, we'll take the sum of squares between divided by the numerator degrees of freedom, that's 645, and we'll divide that by the sum of squares within divided by the denominator degrees of freedom, which is 101.0476, and that's how we arrive at an F value of 6.383. So I copied this worksheet, and I made a few changes. I'm displaying two values two digits to the right of the decimal here, and all the output uh, except for the N column, just to make it a little easier to read. And the other change I made from the original was that in the original, if I go back, you see that I just copied the scores down here into the uh, column B. It's, it's actually just copied in. For the Levines, it's referenced. So cell B23 references B2. 
And the reason I did this is because we just have to replace the values here now, and it'll automatically update down here in column B. So it's just a time-saving tactic as well as reducing the chance for any error. So as you can see, the final result here is that we have an Excel worksheet that calculates the F value in an ANOVA using only functions. So how does that help us to run a Levine's test? All right, so Levine's test is a test for homogeneity of variance. Levine's test works by taking the absolute value between the scores in a particular group and the mean of those scores. All right, so we have all the differences here between substance use and this mean, the absolute value of the differences, and then depression and this mean, and trauma and this mean. So using the ANOVA here, we've calculated the score minus the mean already, but we, we just didn't take the absolute value. We just took the score minus the mean. So we have negative values here and the Levine's test uses the absolute values. So the scores we have are close to being what we need. We just have to make an adjustment to make them absolute values. These three sets of absolute values then would be in these three columns and an ANOVA would be performed using those values. So the only thing we really need to do here is substitute in the absolute value of these three columns into our three original categories and the functions will automatically update and we'll have the F statistic for the Levine's test. Now there are a few ways we can do this uh, but I'm going to do this in a way I think is reasonably quick and efficient. Uh, I'm going to create a new sheet. I'm going to make it a little bit easier to see and remove the uh, grid lines. And then in the original uh, Levine's worksheet, I'm going to take all these values from F2 down to K16. I'm going to select all of them, hit Control C for copy, go over to Sheet 4, and I'm going to go back to Home here. I want to paste just the values. I don't want to paste the functions in here, just the values. And then I know that I'm not going to delete the uh, squared values. So I'm just going to delete those. So I know it's every other column. So you can see I have here, if you look at these uh, three columns of data, they match this, for the uh, differences between the score and the mean for substance use, the same for depression and the same for trauma. All right, so those selected scores equal these selected scores. So I'll just go in here to cell E1 and I'll just get the absolute value of cell A1 and then I'll autofill across three columns and down to the 15th row. So here I have the absolute value of all of these scores. So I'll take this selection, control C, copy this, move back to the Levine's worksheet, move into cell B2, and just paste the values. All the other functions will automatically update. So now we have an ANOVA being conducted except with these values, which are the absolute values of the difference between the scores and the mean for that group. And you can see that the F value here is 14.32391. Now if you didn't have access to SPSS and you didn't want to use the ANOVA feature in the analysis tool pack in Excel, you could use a F-critical 
values table. And those tables are interpreted on a uh, grid. And you have to know the numerator degrees of freedom and then the denominator degrees of freedom. And the intersection of those two points is the critical value of the F-score. So if your F-score is higher than that critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. So just as a review here, the numerator degrees of freedom in this case is 2. It's 3 groups minus 1. And the denominator degrees of freedom is 45 minus 3, the number of observations minus the number of groups. So if you took those degrees of freedom and you went to a table at the critical values of f and you looked it up, you'd find the critical value would be 3.22. And of course, you'd see here that our f value is 14.32. So we would reject the null hypothesis. In this case, we would assume that we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance. So just to confirm that our finding is correct using only Excel functions here, I'm going to go to SPSS. And here are the same data, the original scores, loaded in an SPSS compatible format, where you have treatment in one column, numerically coded 0, 1, and 2. And then you have the scores in another column. So we just go here to Analyze then general linear model, univariate. Treatment is the fixed factor or independent variable. Scores is the dependent variable. And we're really only interested in running the Levine's test here. So go down to options and check homogeneity tests. We're not really interested in the output of the ANOVA, but rather just the Levine's test. So I click OK, and you can see it's 14.324. Uh, so if I kind of move this over to the right, bring the Excel worksheet back into view, you can see this is 14.32391. If you double click on the SPSS results, and then double click into the cell, you can see 14.323907. And, of course, it is statistically significant, 0. 0.000018. And it has the numerator degrees of freedom, or degrees of freedom 1, and the value there is 2. And it has the denominator degrees of freedom, or degrees of freedom 2, and that's a value of 42. So our worksheet, using only Excel functions, provided the same output as... SPSS for Levine's test. And again, in this case, we have violated, these data have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance because we have a statistically significant finding here. If it was greater than 0 0.05, that would be a non statistically significant finding, and we would assume we have met the assumption that our data have met the assumption for homogeneity of variance. I hope you found this video on conducting Levine's test using only Excel functions to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.